Hi, I'm David Coleman from Technical Marketing at Arrowhive Networks. Hi, I'm Gregor Vuchayink from Technical Marketing as well at Arrowhive Networks. So we're going to talk briefly today about the differences between the 2.4 gigahertz RF band and the 5 gigahertz RF band. So Gregor, tell me about the problems with the 2.4 gigahertz uh, RF band in terms of uh, Wi-Fi deployments. Well, I've heard that it's dead, right? Um, but <laughs> I don't know if it's that far. It's definitely not as big in terms of the ether. There's no some, uh, uh, not so much capacity in 2.4 in comparison to 5. And also you have a lot of different technologies being used in 2.4, which makes 5 pretty, pretty, pretty exciting place to be. So let's be a little bit more specific. The 2.4 gigahertz band only has 14 channels, 11 of which we use in the United States, but pretty much worldwide, there's only three usable channels and only three that are um, not overlapping. Correct. So it's almost impossible, number one, to prevent things like co-channel interference. Mm -hmm. And due to overcrowding of the bands or poor design, you also normally get uh, adjacent cell interference. Correct. And also adding to that that we are really only allowed to use 20 megahertz channels at the maximum. And if we go like to 40s, we're really not doing any favors in terms of capacity. Right, no, so 40 megahertz design always has to be careful and it's really only a five gigahertz frequency band only kind of thing. Um, additionally, the SNR at 2.4 gigahertz is always going to be a lot lower, which means you're not going to be able to use the higher modulation and coding schemes that get you the higher data rates and the better Correct. throughput. So let's just leave it at that. Yes, you can use it, use it in a sensible way, but let's talk about where the party is. The party's at 5 gigahertz. The party is at 5 gigahertz. And there's no question about it. So uh, by default, um, uh, our access points in North America uh, have nine channels, mm -hmm. 20 megahertz channels turned on at five gigahertz right off the bat. Those are the non-DFS channels. And in Europe and in other parts of the country, four. Right. So what do we normally recommend you also turn on? Well, n n number one, I would suggest just going for the DFS channels unless you really, really know that you have to avoid them. Because DFS channels are often, there's a misconception about, no, we shouldn't use them. No, y you should use them. There may be cases where you cannot, but you'll know when you uh, hit upon those cases. So just turn them on. You'll, you'll have much, much, much more ether at your disposal. Right. So the DFS channels might be off by default, but we highly recommend that you turn them on. You potentially can get as many as, as 16 more channels right. in your channel plan and effectively, with proper design, eliminate things like co-channel interference, adjacent cell interference, and then you have a lot more available channels and a lot more available bandwidth. Right. So, so what do you think is a really good use of having all those five gigahertz channels? Well, number one, <laughs> and it's near and dear to my heart, is you can use dual radios, uh, dual five gigahertz radios, and utilize more of the channels. More channels used, more capacity used, more happy faces. Which evidently is a shameless plug for our dual five gigahertz APs, the AP250 and the AP550, and more to come in the future. Correct. Yep. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching.